Okay, welcome back. <clears throat> All right, so let's resolve this. This is one of the few times we've actually done a battle where there's two units stacked together. Um, so just bear in mind that we have two hits on us and four hits on them again. It's almost identical to what happened to us the last time. Actually, it is identical. Uh, I don't think they have... Um, yeah. Okay, so let's look at the the guy here. Um, it has not retreated two hexes. Is the hits greater than or equal to the number of steps? And the answer is yes, we're at four hits. So, um, so then they would retreat one unit. I'm gonna assume they, they retreat as a uh, group. Now what's interesting is they can't go here because we have zone of control. And I'm going to assume that they can retreat to here because that's with other units. I don't know, because that's our zone of control too. So let me stop and see how well our player aid helps us here. So that is actually a very interesting situation. So uh, they want to retreat. That's the, the outcome that we receive. And normally they would be able to, right? We, that part we understand. There's no issues there. Um, uh, all right, so player aid's already answering my first question. All units retreat together and end in the same hex, so that's good. Uh, if you're dispersed, they only retreat one. Isolated infantry, um, well, they're not isolated yet. They're just out, low in supply. So, um, OOF units may not retreat out of fuel. Okay, that's not the case. Okay, so here's the priority. Into a hex not in enemy zone of control. Into a hex in enemy zone of control occupied by one supplied unit. That is our situation. Uh, they're going into a hex that's within enemy zone of control that has a supplied unit. Um, oh no. Into excellent enemy occupied by one plus supplied unit. So, I think the language on that is weird. Yeah, this one's better. Into a hex occupied by a friendly unit that's in supply. That friendly unit's what's in supply. In an enemy zone of control. That's what we're doing, is that one right there. They could go into an enemy zone of control that's in friendly supply, but if they do, they remove a step from the retreating unit. And it looks like if they retreat where there's a supplied unit, they don't take any actual hits. All right, so they did that, and so that would mean their first hit's gone. All right, so now we have three hits, but there's four pips on them, because this was there was two units in this uh, particular stack. So, um, <clears throat> so now we got to do this up here, and it's saying, you know, did it retreat twice? No. Um, Uh, is the hits greater than or equal to defending steps? No. So now we go to C. If losing a step would cause the units to exert no zone of control from the hex it occupies. That's a weird one because it's in a space with a, another unit that's not wasn't part of the battle. 
So I'm assuming that I ignore that. <clears throat> so this was a good question for the masterminds here. This unit's already there. So um, he's gonna exert zone of control even if these guys both don't. Cause if I do a hit on him, he's gonna lose zone of control and he's gonna lose zone of control. So they're, they're gonna lose zone of control. Um, So uh, I'm going to say no to losing a step would cause the units to lose their own control. Not because of the guy there. I think the guy that's, that was there that they, they moved on top of, we ignore him for purposes of this resolution. Um, and I, I'm convinced I read that somewhere. Um, uh, the um, the uh, participating stack with the most steps, multi-step unit with the highest selector number, um, the one-step unit with the highest selector, and then nobody can be. All right, so the reason I'm reading this is because uh, we're going to do D, and if I do determine that they're going to take a hit, um, uh, it's only going to be to one of the two units, because there's two total, there's two different units there. So, um, all right, number of pips in the defend a number of defending steps. There's four. And is everybody across the river? No. Are they surrounded or out of communication? No. Uh, would retreat require a step loss? The answer is no, because they can retreat into another space. Uh, if the units have already retreated one hex, plus two. So that's six. So let's roll. And I rolled a 10. If the result was less than or equal to hold chance, they take a step loss, else they retreat. So they're going to retreat again. And both of these units are going to end up here. And they're going to be dispersed. So this is really interesting now, stretching the rules here. Um, the rules say that if any one unit in the space is dispersed, then the entire thing is treated as dispersed for the purposes of the battle. So what happens here, because these battles are supposed to be simultaneous, I think um, these units are not there for purposes of resolving this battle. Because I have a battle here that's, that's going to take place, we just haven't resolved it. I think we have to just assume that those units aren't there. Okay, so that was the second step loss, right? Then we have two more, and that part's easy. They just both take hits. And um, since there's two units, we have to disperse them equally. And so they're just both going to take one hit each. And it's really funny because they're on a... There's this... There's like how tall of a stack... Of units can we possibly create? <laughs> okay, so now we get to move forward. So I'm going to move these guys forward here, like so, and then um, these guys, if I want to move forward, they have to go here first, and then I can go somewhere else, but I'm actually going to leave them where they are. So, uh, so we're putting in the noose on these guys. And the uh, last one now is going to be this. And just understand we have infantry infiltration going on. And it's just this unit by himself. He's a strength three. And we have four, nine, 12, and four is 16. So it's a five to one odd for us. Uh, there's no elite units for us, but there is three pips. So we have one, two, three, four, five and then a minimum of two for the chip draw. Actually, it's six because we played a card. All right, so before I forget, let's draw their card. They're gonna have artillery. And their artillery is, probably just says they have artillery. Yep, it does. Okay, uh, oh, we were supposed to do two hits for our guys. So let's figure that out. Those are elites. I'm actually going to do the same thing I did before. Uh, 
and then they go back to where they were. So then it's just a matter of do I want to move in? And my answer is yes, I'll move in. Keep the heat on them. Okay. Sorry about that. So uh, now it's two chit draw minimum of two, maximum of six. Here comes a two. Is the, are they dispersed unsupplied? <laughs> they're, of course, they're gonna ask that question. Um, I'm gonna say no, they're not dispersed. Is there a defender adjacent? Yes, there is. Uh, so that doesn't help. Are we greater than three to one? Yes. Are we greater than five to one? Yes. So uh, not good. Um, I'm gonna draw four more. One, two, oh, that one's out. All right, are they on clear? Actually, I don't know what they're on. Let me check. I think they're on broken. Yep, they're on broken. Nope, they're not on clear. Are they on woods, forest, or city? They're not on any of those, so out. Is the attacker green? No, it's not. Is the attacker elite? Unfortunately, we're not. Oh, come on. Uh, do we have greater than eight to one? No, we don't. Less than three to one. Nope, that's out. Is the attacker elite? No. Flank attack. Yes, because we played infantry infiltration. So we have flank attack. All right, so those are all resolved, or all what's gonna happen, and let me just put my discards out. Okay, so we're taking two hits, and they're taking three. So uh, before I forget my two, let me do mine. Four, five, I already hit him once. I'm gonna hit this one for one. And I guess I'm gonna hit this one, which sucks, because he was a nice one. So, not good. But now we're going to do him, and he cancels one with his uh, improved position, so that cancels one of them. All right, so then he has two more hits. Well, those two match his pip level, so he's going to try to retreat. He can't retreat here. He couldn't go there, uh, so he will go there. So it gets rid of one, now he's down to one, and this would cause him to get a step loss. So that C kicks in. Uh, he's gonna retreat again. So he's gonna go there and then take a disperse. And I'm, I'm feeling he doesn't take like the retreats don't cause him to lose damage because he's retreating where there's other units. So that's the only thing that stinks about that. And because other units retreated to his space, I don't think I get to do anything. So uh, huge questions there, folks. I mean, uh, the timing of it, uh, could I have taken advantage of the fact that that guy was, that there was dispersed units in that location? I'm assuming no. I think everything is in real time so uh but it does create an, an interesting issue of i can't advance right now after combat because even though he retreated there's other units there now and so i can't advance or could i have advanced and if i did then where the hell would the other ones retreat to if you know so that's the part that's uh, really weird about this um uh I, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to look at the player guide here to see if uh, there's anything.
Yeah, I'm not seeing anything that, that tells me. Maybe it's in the rule book. I would have to sit down and check it out. All right, so um, that's the end of my impulse. And I'm going to go ahead and just draw four cards, get back up to six. And uh, sure enough, as we guessed, they're all uh, non-primary cards, or all but one of them. Uh, and then uh, the allies would get to go. So, uh... Slowing it down. Uh, our advances after combat wouldn't have caused anything to trigger. So yeah, now we go to the Allied Impulse. And... Yeah, let's just see what it is. So we have the... The 8th Corps. 9th Armored or 101st, which is interesting because that means all those reserves are coming out, the ones that we were just talking about. Oh, that hurts. That hurts so bad. <laughs> and that's exactly what's going to happen. So um, so this will be a good test of using this because we now have a whole bunch of uh, air troopers. Uh, four of them, in fact. The Airborne's coming. I drew the exact card needed for the Airborne, which is crazy. Actually, no, it says deploy the 17th Airborne. This is the 101st. Never mind, let me back up. But it does say 8th Corps. Wow, I don't think these guys come out. And here's why. So it says deploy the 17th Airborne and the 11th A Division Reserves. Um, those guys aren't the 17th Airborne, and they're not 11 A Division. The, uh, the division for those ones that I had just pulled out were the 101st Division. So it's definitely not 11 A. That's not 101st. The 17th Airborne... I don't think it's them either, which is interesting because they are the 8th Corps. So, like, this core does match who they are, but, um, it's like I'm trying to look real quick. And you can see this is the 28th Division, the 9A Division, right? Um, none of them are even close to matching this. So is there, like, units somewhere else that we're just not... following it makes no sense I'm like looking it through the entire stack of reserves over here and I don't see the 17th Airborne Division for the 8th Corps that means it oh hold on there's oh my gosh they don't come out until turn 27 the 11 8 11th Armored doesn't come out to turn 27 as well these are like Look at this, folks. See that 27 there? This card isn't even supposed to be in the deck. How the heck it got in there, I don't know. So uh, if you were shouting at me through your <laughs> video, let me just draw another card. We're going to do a different action. Here we go. This one says 16. Second Infantry Division or the 99th Infantry Division of the 5th Corps. Well, um, first thing it wants us to do is not deploy the 5th Corps Reserve Unit because, remember, we're playing the German solo game, not the Allied solo game. So since we're doing a German solo game, it says activate the 2nd and 99 divisions. So uh, we got to figure out where the 5th Corps is and what their divisions are. So um, the 5th Corps has, like, a purple top. And... I think I see them here. Like, for example, we eliminated that from the 5th Corps. See, he's from the 99th, which is one of the ones that we're supposed to activate. All right, so then uh, here you can see uh, two more that are in the reserves. 
But it didn't say to deploy a reserve unit. Not for this card, at least. Um, it says activate. Second and 99. So these units, wherever they were, we killed one of them. Oh, it's these guys that we've been beating up to hell up here. Okay, so let's figure this out. They're activating. And it says only the second and 99 division. So this is the second, so he's gonna activate. Uh, that's the second, but he's dispersed. Second dispersed. And then these are the 99 dispersed. So this will be an interesting activation. So let's see how this plays out. We're gonna draw three cards. And <clears throat> so some of you were answering my question regarding how these activations work. And it's really funny because um, the way you guys type sometimes confuses me, but I think I got it. And so here's in a nutshell what I was trying to ask. If, if this guy satisfies the criteria for a move action, for example, but then you determine after going through the priorities that he would not move because he's trying to hold the gap or whatever, does that mean that his activation's over? That's been my question. And, and you guys danced around it with your answers to me and didn't quite answer that question. Because you kept saying, well, you did the right thing because even though he wouldn't have moved, the other two actions wouldn't have done anything for him either. Well, that's not what I was asking you. What I was asking you is, do I even check those other two? And I, and I think that because of the way you answered it, you sort of answered my question. And that was, if I try to move him and he does not actually move, that means that he's still eligible to do another action later. So I have to go through the other cards and see if they apply to him. Because my thoughts were that he did qualify to move. He met all the criteria. He just didn't actually physically move. So from my perspective, he activated it and he just did nothing. But what I heard from you guys is no, he didn't activate. He then went to the next card and then to the next card and then realized he didn't do nothing. So um, I know it seems subtle and it seems different, but in my head, those are two drastically different methods. <laughs> and so that's what I was trying to, um, to understand. Uh, but I think I do. Okay, so there's the first one. Fill the gap, which um, we're going to get a lot of, right? Because uh, these low numbers. But the first one is fill the gap, big to low. Um, are they proximate to an empty position, which a journey unit is also proximate? Excuse me. It's late at night. And um, if it's less than five then it can't be in another allied zone of control. Um, oh, so my answer is going to be, so their priority is, is they're going to preserve the line, they're going to avoid surround, and protect the VP hacks. So, uh, Lots of questions with this one. And this is actually the real test on whether or not I'm gonna be able to start the campaign over because I have to I have to get through this and I have to be able to I have to be able to resolve this without um Too many issues or otherwise I know I'm not ready and I got to keep practicing which is what I'm doing with this um, okay All right, so I'm reading and basically it's telling me to just check and it's possible for a unit within a stack to activate or just a whole stack or, you know, stuff like that. 
um, I can let you see what I'm looking at here. And then I'm looking at, um, for movement, it says C, T, E, C, and supply status. What the hell is T, E, C? It's really funny. And see, this is my documentation professional background. It says C, T, E, C, and then I come over here and there's no T, E, C. <laughs> anywhere in there. So it's like, oh, come on. Don't do this to me. Uh, TEC, what would you stand for? It's something. And then, and supply status. I'm guessing because they, the people who made this, whoever they were, um, They have a nice, um, see everything that's in blue just describes things really well. It's like you can see right here, they're explaining supply status. So, um, so the TEC thing though, wasn't on there. So now I'm very curious what TEC stands for. Oh, TEC. Cute. Terrain effects chart. <laughs> okay, so basically it wants me to check that for costs and restrictions. Um, fine. Uh, I think the bigger thing is a lot of these units aren't going to be able to move. So, um, may always move at least one hex as long as the move is, other is otherwise allowed. Unit may never enter an enemy occupied hex. This movement needs to be beefed up a little bit. So they always get to move at least one hex, even if it's an enemy zone of control. I guess that's true. I mean, we, for example, can't move out of one zone of control and into another, but maybe they can. Is there a, there we go, moving adjacent to, move one at a time. If two plus hexes next to the German unit, priorities to an empty hex, hex it takes the most movement points to reach. Your choice. Okay. Getting out the other player aids that came with the game, because they are actually really good. <laughs> um, they don't have everything, but they're very good, the things that they do have. Um, I think we're in a situation where uh, they need to move, and what's going through my head is this, and this is what I'm trying to sort out. They need to fill the gap, yes. They are filling the gap right now. However, they are in a situation where there are potential surround issues. And that's what I'm uh, looking at is, are they going to retreat? Because this does not say retreat. This just says fill the gap. In the avoid surround, I thought the language was really clear as if you're moving, you avoid surround. But if you're already surrounded or going to be surrounded, you don't. The other thing that's interesting is the next one is strengthen, which is not retreat. And then last one is move. Sorry, I'm a little off camera there. Um, so I'm just seeing. So avoid surround says do not move the allied unit into a hex in which it would be in danger of surround. Now, it says do not move into, but what if you're already in a spot that's in danger of being surrounded? Would you stay? And that's um, that's the part where these rules get a little wonky. Um, 
So would I stay in a spot? Uh, and, and here, let's give you an exam example so you can comment on it if you'd like. Uh, these units are dispersed. So they're gonna spend their turn removing their disperse. Same with them, same with them. But look at this guy. This guy is almost surrounded. He's in danger of being surrounded. So would he move to preserve the gap? I mean, right now he's holding a gap line right now. He's, he's going to get surrounded, <laughs> but he's filling the gap right now. Um, you know, could he retreat and still fill in the gap? Uh, maybe. Uh, what's interesting is because he has dispersed units near him, by him retreating, he's actually making it weaker for everybody else. And he's in a victory point hex. So there's all kinds of things that they're going to prioritize. And uh, this guy is practically surrounded. So once again, is he going to move? What's he going to do? And uh, that's the part I'm struggling with here. Um, I know I'm supposed to do this action. I know he's supposed to, see, because like, preserve the line means don't move. Protect the VP hex, that means don't move. Avoid surround means move. Now, I would argue that since this is second in priority, that the protect VP hex is not the priority. So this trumps that, but preserving the line trumps the avoid surround. Then if you read the language for avoid surround, it just says don't move into a space that would cause him to be surrounded. Um, I'm not moving. I would just be staying where I am. So then I wouldn't be doing anything. So that's my hang up right now. Um, and I'm not seeing anything definitive. Oh, movement, but this would be allied movement, which I think is different, but that is in the same section. So let's just all go to section 10, have a good time. So what's interesting here is the rule book talks about being in danger of surround, which is different than avoid surround. Right now, what I'm describing is they're in danger of surround. Um, Okay, so the rules are telling me uh, one thing here. It's telling me that this is not in order of priority. So uh, the protect VP hex says you protect the VP. So that dude sitting in the VP hex is not leaving, even if he's at risk of being surrounded. Um, the other one is preserve line. So really, I think you just have to read them. And preserve line, do not enter a hex if doing so would create or enlarge a gap. So uh, what that means is we can retreat, but we have to preserve the line and not create additional gaps. 
And remember, a gap is defined as I can trace a line uh, from my soldiers uh, to the western edge of the map. Uh, a line of uh, communication, if you will. Um, and so uh, the Allied units are trying to keep all the zones of controls intact. So that way we can't do that. And if, um, let's say I had two lines, of, I had two gaps already right now. Um, and I actually might, considering the situation. But let's say I did. If I move, I just can't all of a sudden have three. So I'm allowed to move as long as I keep it at two uh, and don't increase the number of gaps. So that's what that's saying. And then uh, the surround one, um, it says avoid surround, which is specifically for when you're moving. So I'm going to conclude that uh, a lot of these units are skipping this first card. So units may always move at least one hex as long as the move is otherwise allowed. <laughs> I always like that. You can always move one hex as long as it's otherwise allowed. Always as long as. Okay, that's not good English. But um, you must pay a movement point to leave an enemy controlled hex in addition to the cost. You must stop moving if you enter someone's zone of control. Yeah, so they're following the same movement uh, rules that we are. So nothing new there. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's try to roll through this. All right, so our card, here's the key things. 27 down to one, so we're going from max to min. And they're trying to move to one of these hold positions that the Germans could also, that's proximate, meaning a German could move there. This is a perfect example of one, that one right there. Okay, and then they're trying to preserve the line so they wouldn't do it if it creates extra gaps. They wouldn't do it if it allows them to be surrounded and they would never leave a BP hex. Okay, so we already know Bing Bing and Bing are dispersed. So they're just gonna lose disbursement. So that means they don't get to do anything. Uh, we're only activating the second and 99 division. So this guy is the first division, so he does not activate. This one is second and he's number six. This one's number three. And we just decided that all three of these are doing nothing. So uh, we're gonna just get rid of their disbursement markers. So all I have is this guy and this guy, and this one's gonna go first because he's a six. Now he does want to retreat, but here's the thing. He has nowhere to go. Um, he could, He's not, he's not even allowed to move here. That's what's crazy. So he's stuck where he is. So that card does not apply to him. And then this one is staying in a VP hex. So he's not doing anything. So let's go to the next card. Strengthen. Is a unit proximate to but not stacked with allied unit with strength less than three? to which German units with a total strength greater than seven are also proximate. Move to closest qualifying unit stack. Preserve the line, avoid surround, protect VP again. Okay, so this guy's not moving. If anything, this guy would wanna move to him. Um, this guy would wanna move to this stack and I think he took a hit. This guy has only two pips because he's been damaged. So he really could move there. But the rules say you can't leave the, you can't move from when you're adjacent to a unit, you can't just move to another space that's also adjacent to the same unit. I couldn't do it to them, they can't do it to me. So he's unable to move there even though he wants to. So that's my conclusion with that.
And so, in other words, he can't do anything. Um, now, this last one uh, is simply move, but there you can see it's the situation is a unit or stack is not adjacent to a supplied German unit. They're adjacent, so they don't get to... So basically, my conclusion is, is that none of the allied units do anything. Um, but that does mean this guy is going to get an improvement. Uh, because he, uh, since he didn't do anything, he basically dug trenches. Now, I would give one to this guy, but he's in a city or town. And Sir Brastius has explained to me six or seven times, I can't do that. <laughs> so I finally learned. Um, so uh, there you go. That is that. I, um, again, I know I took a long time on that just to figure out that they are doing nothing. But that's where this game is at. And until you get extremely comfortable with these rules, I think that's how... You have to do this. So um, uh, that concludes my allied impulse. And um, I think things are going well. I would like to hear what your thoughts are. Um, as you can see, I'm still running into stuff, but um, I'm very tempted to start over. And so I would like to do that and then make it more of a formal, hey, let's teach as we go thing. Um, but otherwise, uh, I'm ready to start my next impulse. Uh, but that's enough for me today. It's really late at night. I didn't really start early today. So, uh, uh, as you may be able to hear, I'm still a little under the weather. So I'm going to go uh, quit, get this uploaded, and anticipate some feedback. So thank you very much. And um, it's a pretty intense game. I mean, the... Uh, there's just so much going on. And um, I just feel like the Germans are doomed. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, uh, stay awesome.